Resnick's drugstore. Oh, hi, Mom. It is Howard. <laughs> That's just my business voice. <laughs> Toothpaste? Yeah, okay. Well, not too late. But don't worry. It's Saturday night and I've got a date. And besides, there's no school tomorrow. Yeah, okay. I won't forget. I'll bring it with me. Right. Bye now. in order to go out? No, my mother wants some toothpaste. I guess the boy's gone. Yes, you said he could go at 7.30 if there were no more orders. Forgot this prescription for Mrs. Don. Oh, well, it's on my way home. I can run it over if it's urgent, Mr. Resnick. No, no rush. All it is is some colored water and a little laxative. Mrs. Don doesn't think much of a doctor unless he gives her some medicine. There's nothing wrong with her anyway except too much food, too little exercise. Well, here we are. A nice... Genuine, real, labeled prescription. Mrs. Dodd's key to happiness. Well, gee, Mr. Resnick, they're not all fake, though. Uh, prescriptions, I mean. <laughs> no. And this isn't altogether a fake, either. It has its psychological effect. It makes us, Mrs. Dodd, feel that she's being properly treated. A druggist has to be a kind of a witch doctor. Take a look at all the stuff out here on the shelves. The oils and salves and creams and cure-alls. Special ingredients. Magic formulas. Ah. Eye of newt and toe of frog, wool of bat and tongue of dog. What? No, oh, that's from Macbeth. No Shakespeare up at that school of yours? We're taking Hamlet this year. No, you don't take Shakespeare. You read him. Uh, witch doctors, that's what we are. What you'll be someday. I'll be in industrial chemistry. That's different. Is it? Won't you have a sales manager urging you on to invent a special ingredient, a new secret formula to goose the company sales? There's all kinds of pure research going on. Well, maybe you'll be lucky. Well, Mr. Resnick, don't you have to make and sell the things people want? Well, do they want them? And do I have to sell them? Do I have to go along with all these slogans and phony claims and pedal junk as if it were penicillin? <laughs> Resnick's. Oh, yes, Mrs. Taylor. No, oh, that's a new one on me. I could order it for you, though. No, no trouble at all. Monday afternoon? Fine. Thank you, Mrs. Taylor. Well, seems I do. Have to or not. A customer. It's about time. This has been one slow Saturday. Never mind. He's a regular client, and he's got a regular routine. Mustn't interrupt him until he's ready. He's going to riffle through all the picture and photography magazines, look at all the nudes and cheesecake on the sly. And then when he's seen all there is to see, he's going to find the magazine he was really looking for, the Saturday Post. <laughs> you want a bet? Gee, Mr. Resnick. I don't get you sometimes. Oh, am I that subtle? I doubt. <laughs> well, everything seems funny to you. Uh, your business, people, everything. Well, just about everything is funny, in a pathetic sort of way. You take that fellow out there. He's got a brain. He can wonder and discover, enjoy thought. Well, what does he do? He gloats over sexy photographs. That's what he lets his brain tell him to do. And Mrs. Dodd and her magic potion. Mrs. Taylor and a new face cream. It'll make her wrinkles vanish. She thinks. That's pretty funny. And me. I help these people delude themselves. That makes me funny and pathetic too, doesn't it? Well, you help people who are sick, but when you prepare medicine they need. That's not pathetic. A little good cancels a little evil, eh? That's not Shakespeare. That's just Resnick. <laughs> Resnick, the old philosopher. Oh, I see our reader is ready for service. No, no, I'll go. Bet you a dime it's a Saturday post. <laughs> Resnick's drugstore. Oh. Hi, George. Huh? Oh, about half an hour when we close. Drop around to your place. You dope, I'm going to Mary's party, and so are you. 
forgot about it. Mary reminded you yesterday. We can't skip it. It's my girlfriend's party, and you, and you want me not to be there? Look, wh whatever it is you're so excited about, you can tell me at the party. It's nothing so important that it can't wait a couple of hours? <laughs> yeah, sure. We'll see you there. Bye. He fooled me. He took a McLean's. <laughs> You know, I was just talking to my friend George. Boy, is he steamed up about some, some new idea he's got. George? Yeah, the dark, bouncy type comes in here quite a bit. Oh, yes, George. Nice fella. Right. You know, you're lucky, your kids. You're much better off than when I was your age. Well, gee, you've done pretty well, Mr. Resnick. For the son of a Ukrainian immigrant, you mean? No, no, I know you didn't mean it that way. There are those who would, but you're not one of them. No, what I mean is you and George have a lot more choice. A student can work to pay his way. There's lots of jobs, more scholarships, and so on. Not like in 1933. You don't have to play it safe. No, I guess not. You're free in a way we were never free. That's a great advantage. Well, end of lecture. Sermon's over. Now, why don't you go on and enjoy yourself? Go on, I'll close the joint. Oh, gee, it's still pretty early. Never too early to call on your girlfriend. <laughs> Go on, beat it. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Resnick. Howard, I want to tell you about my idea right away. Come on. But look, George, I want to dance with Mary. No, dance your feet off after. Wait till you hear about this. It's here. You, my friend, are going to discover Canada next summer. I had an idea this is being done. Never mind the comedy. You and me are going to explore this country from coast to coast next summer. Now, wait a minute. Listen, I was leaving through an atlas after supper. I started uh, looking at maps. You know, uh, where is um, India in any way, that sort of thing. And I thought, this is a big country. Big and different. Different climates, different people. And this is so, a remarkable discovery. Steady. I thought, I'd like to see this country, all of it. See it, hear it, taste it, smell it. Well, someday, I thought. Someday. Why someday? Why not sooner? Why not next summer? Howard and me, I thought. Off like a couple of gypsies a day school closes. And both of us, um, what is it? Um, Amare Usqua Amare. From sea to sea. Are you nuts? How can we make like a couple of tourists? I got a summer job to do to make enough money for college next fall. And you too. I'm not talking about a tourist junket. We work our way. Lots of odd jobs around. We, we hitch or take a bus somewhere and work. Soak up the place, then move on. Okay, so we don't save so much. But you've got some money in the bank. So have I. We can make our college fees okay. Okay. Maybe we have to hit our parents for a few bucks. So what? So you're crazy. You're not thinking, man. You're not taking it in. No, I'm getting you loud and clear. No, you're not. You're all fogged up. Well, okay, unfog me. Okay. Now take it in deep, man. Oh, it's so hot. Do you want a cigarette? Yes, I got a cigarette. No. Come on. Come on. Like I said, we hitch. Only take a bus if we have to. Besides, we both got sleeping bags. We can use them for, for beds and dunnage sacks and sleep out in the open whenever we get a chance. Under bridges, in barns, anywhere. Like a couple of hobos. Oh, think of it. Think of what we'll see, the people we'll meet. You ever met a, a lobster fisherman, a hard rock miner, a country storekeeper? No, well, neither have I. I don't know anything about other people, what they're like or what they think or talk about. I don't either. All I know about is what my parents or, or my teachers have told me. Well, I'm sick of learning from books. I want to see everything. Yeah, me too. Howard! I'll be right there. Yo, 
all our lives we've we've lived in about 10 square blocks home school after school job movies the girlfriend's place is your place and my place fooling around in the park sure and there's a whole big world all around us gee what's the matter now well, i don't know if my folks will go for this you're not a kid anymore for pete's sake yeah but I'm sold, but I don't know if I can sell my folks. Well, you'll have to, that's all. If I can do it, you can. Have you said anything? No, I, I figured I'd talk to you first. But don't worry, my old man will get the picture. You know, what a guy. He's the greatest boy. You no, know, I bet he'll want to go with us. Yeah. <laughs> Good joke about it? Well, why don't you come down and tell it to everybody if it's such a very funny story? No, no story, Mary. Something really terrific. George, can you see your father herding cows for some farmer? <laughs> He'd do it. I'd love it. <laughs> really? Because he won't dance or, or play the big deal like some of these guys. He won't dance. He can't dance. He hasn't got a speck of rhythm in him. Well, so what? Does everybody have to dance? Well, what on earth do you want to come to a party for if you're not going to get with it? He came because you asked him. He came to drag you off and to talk and to make jokes about everybody else. <sighs> Mary, you've got it all wrong. We were talking about next summer. I just don't know what you see in him. He's not your type at all. Just because a guy's a little different, because he wants to discuss things. But why? Why can't he just leave things alone? Because, well, some people have to talk about things, don't you see? Certainly, but... Mary, has everybody gone home? Yes, Mother. He's not here. Oh. Howard, you slept on the floor. Oh, go away. You're late. Mom's called and called, oh, and Daddy's away. up too. Oh, all right. I'll be down in two shakes. Sleeping in a sleeping bag. <sighs> Ready 
here. Right. Good morning, Daddy. Good morning, dear. Jean, where is Howard? He's coming. You know what? He slept on the floor. Jean, later on, dear. And don't say you know what. Should have called Howard myself. 9.32. Going somewhere this morning, Daddy? Going somewhere? Why, no, dear, no. Good morning, Mom. Good morning, son. Good morning, Dad. Good morning, son. And a good party last night? Oh, it was all right. You slept late. Not good to overdo, you know. Well, I was in by 12.30, and I'm not at all tired, Dad, really. I recommend the practice of never being out of your bed after midnight, son. And I find it pays. You know what, Daddy? He was sleeping... Jean! Ah, nothing like Sunday morning breakfast. I'll get it. I wonder who that could be. On Sunday morning. It's George! George? At this hour? George. Howard, can't we even have Sunday breakfast in peace? I didn't know he was coming over, Mom. Hi, you little one. Hi, thank you. Hi, Mr. Mitchell. Good morning, George. Morning, Mrs. Mitchell. Good morning, George. Will you have some breakfast? No, thanks, Mrs. Mitchell. But I'll have some coffee, though, if I may. Surely. All well at your house, George? Oh, yeah, sure. Thanks. Well, Mr. Mitchell. Hey, uh, you look a little dopey this morning, Howard. No wonder. He slept on the floor in his sleeping bag. You mean you're getting in shape already? Boy, I'd better start, too. Hey, what do you think of the idea, Mr. Mitchell? Pretty terrific, eh? Oh, I told my dad about it this morning, too, and he got all excited. He got mad, too. Said, um, why didn't I think of that when I was your age? <laughs> That's what he said. He said... It would be the, the greatest trip and the best experience we'll ever have. Oh, thanks, Mrs. Mitchell. Trip? Oh, me and Howard next summer. You see, we thought we'd start on the East Coast. Well, you forgot to mention this scheme, Howard. We just talked about it last night, Dad. George has this idea. It's a swell idea, too, Dad. George, just what is this idea? Well, me and Howard, well, me, I guess, I thought, well, here we are, young guys, just finishing high school. Next year, we go to college. Well, we're grown up and pretty husky. So I thought it'd be a wonderful idea for us to knock around a bit before we start college. Fend for ourselves. After all, we'll, we'll be dependent on our parents for a few years, at least. Well, for room and board, anyhow. So I thought it'd be good experience for us to learn what it feels like to be on our own. What it is, what life is like for other people. What, what real hard work is like. Hard work is rarely enjoyable, George. Well, that's quite a project. But scarcely practical for Howard, anyway. He's all set for the summer. A job that can teach him something. It's too good a chance to pass up. But this is a great chance, too, Dad. I may never be able to do it any other time. You're not serious about this, surely. Why not? A little matter of an arrangement with a company that may be interested in employing you when you have your degree. You have several years of association with the company before you actually go on the permanent staff. And I don't think your prospective employer would think much of somebody who threw an opportunity away simply to go on a, on a summer-long camping trip. It's not a camping trip. How on earth would you live? Oh, we get jobs wherever we want. That, that's easy. And we hitchhike to save our money and take sleeping bags and sleep out. George figures we could travel clear across Canada this way, meeting all kinds of people, seeing how they live, and seeing different parts of the country. Mm. Everybody has the same dream, Howard. But how does it work out? Dirty jobs that no one else will do, 
crummy rooming houses, bad food, association with drunks and rowdies. It's just a waste of precious time. Waste? Mr. Mitchell, maybe your experience wasn't so good, but... I've never had that experience, George, and I don't know what it's like to dig sewers, but I can imagine. But you don't know. And even if we do come up against uh, uh, rowdies and drunks and, and bad food and all, that's part of it. That's the whole idea, to come up against life. A person should know about things. You can't just go along in a safe groove and pretending that everything is neat and tidy. Gladys, is there any bicarb in the medicine cabinet? Yes, dear. I'll get it. I'll manage, thank you. Gee, I'm, I'm sorry, Mrs. Mitchell. I didn't mean... Well, I meant you to mean like everybody. It's sometimes hard to know just what you mean, George. Oh, I'll blow. See you later, Howard. Yeah, okay. Yes? Homework, dear? Yep. Seriously. Your father's very upset, you know. Where do you think we'd be if he'd followed every impulse, done just what he wanted to do? Never had an impulse. What, dear? He's never had an impulse in his life. That's no way to talk about your father. He just didn't get the idea. He didn't understand and he didn't try to. Your father is no fool. I didn't say he was. He's just... He always takes for granted that, he, that he's right. He always knows what's best for everybody. He's a good deal older than you. He must know a little more. Why? Maybe in some things I know more than he does. Look. Mom, try to see things from my point of view. Everything's all laid on, and, and that's fine by me. College and summer work and a job when I graduate, just like he, just like we planned. And why waste a summer? There you go. Everything that isn't the way you and Dad do things is waste. Don't you see? Just for a little while, I'd like to do something strictly on my own. For the next five years, I've got to go to school. And Come home, eat with the family, sleep in that bed, be on time for Sunday breakfast. Because the world would come to an end if the Mitchells didn't sit down for breakfast at 9.30 sharp. Howard. I don't understand you. There are thousands of young fellows would give their eye teeth for your advantages. And you talk as though your father was a tyrant or something. Mom. Oh, what's the use? You don't seem to realize. We want the very best for you. We don't want our son to have to roam around like a hobo. Get mixed with nasty people. What? You might get in jail or something. That's right. I might. Howard, really? This could be the greatest and most valuable experience in my life. I wish you wouldn't echo that George so much. I don't. Getting all emotional because your father and I oppose this notion of yours. It's not a notion. We'll see. It's not a notion. 
not a notion. Not this time. Or is it? How do you know? How are people so certain about what's real or phony, true or false? They're all so sure. Mary, Dad, George, Mr. Resnick. Wonder what Mr. Resnick would say about this. About certainty? It's tricky, Howard, because so often it's based on uncertainty. You follow? You see, a lot of people take a positive stand because they're confused and uncertain. It comforts them to have nice, neat answers for everything. Okay, okay, Mr. Resnick. But can a person be positive because he knows the truth, knows what he wants? It happens, George, but it isn't happening to Howard. It can, and it will. Maybe. But maybe Howard's one of these people who can't choose between two worlds, ever, even though he may adopt one or the other. Look, are we talking about a trip or a way of life? I wonder. You two leave him alone. You're always stirring up trouble for Howard. Everything was all planned, all set. Son, you mustn't be irresponsible and change your plans. Whose plans? Everybody's plans. Everybody who wants to live life in a sensible and orderly way instead of like a creepy bohemian. Now, don't be too hard on George. He's young and impetuous. You mean wild and unstable, don't you, Mr. Mitchell? I kind of scare you, don't I, Mr. Mitchell? Really? Oh, he means well, Howard, but his way is small and narrow and frightened. What you really want is to break up Howard and me, don't you? Look, as far as I'm concerned, you're just a body without a mind, doll. But if he wants you, that's his business. No, no, you see, it never is. None of us lives unto ourselves. We all respond to other people's judgment. It's hard to know what you want. Howard may never know. It's the human comedy. Must you sneer at everything? A smile is not a sneer, sir. Howard, do you want to go through life doubting and sneering like him, or probing and upsetting like him? Hedging and hiding like him, or walking through life with a book on your head like her? Howard Mitchell, this is no laughing matter. Listen to me. No, no, listen to everybody. Listen to yourself. Be yourself. Take my advice. Be careful. Be sensible. Everything can be nice, Howard. Think of us. Think of yourself. It isn't that simple. I'm Mary Usko. I'm Mary. You must do it my way. Mine. No, mine. 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 Maybe I should leave home altogether. Ah, you see, that would be childish. Cool and firm, that's the way to be. Yeah, cool and firm. Face it, Howard, you're a moist putty, that's what you are. Anybody can shove you into any shape they like. 